Try this. Just a couple of days ago, a Florida woman, of course, tried to kill her husband with a tuna fish sandwich. From the examiner, deputies, postal worker, naturally, tried to kill husband with poisoned tuna fish sandwich. 37-year-old Florida woman is behind bars after she allegedly tried to kill her husband by poisoning him with the tuna fish sandwich. Beth Dickinson Richards, who is uh, employed as a mail carrier for the U.S. Postal Service, confessed to the attempted poisoning, claiming that she, and after she was Mirandized, claiming she crushed up Trazodone pills and laced her husband's tuna sandwich with the stuff. During the arrest, Polk County deputies also found a pouch of cannabis in Beth Richards' room, which she reportedly admitted belonged to her, adding to her list of charges. So she now faces charges of attempted first-degree murder with a tuna sandwich and possession of marijuana. And see, I don't know, you banned tuna fish, trazodone, marijuana, none of this would have happened. And these people, well, a husband would not have gotten sick. The wife of a New York City man who was pushed onto the subway tracks to his death by a mumbling stranger, says she and her husband had argued before the tragedy. Key Suckhan of Queens died in the hospital shortly after being hit by a train. This happened yesterday, Times Square subway station. Key Suckhan's widow told the New York Post that she tried to call him after their 11 a.m. flight, but he never picked up. So, apparently she hired somebody to push him in front of the train. But maybe not, we don't know. Well, all we know is this. If a subway train hadn't been running, Key Suck Hand would be alive today. That's the bottom line. No subway, no Key Suck Hand dead. It's no more complicated than that. I, if I know one thing, I know that. No crossbow, no knife. The guy wouldn't have got killed in the classroom. Las Vegas. Not through here, folks. A jury in Las Vegas handed down a sentence of life in prison without the possibility of parole for a 25-year-old convicted of stabbing a man to death with a knife in a karaoke bar over a $10,000 gambling debt. Hitman with a knife. With a knife. A hitman with a knife. This is this just can't happen. Hitmen use guns. You know, in every one of these death stories, they got eight of them here. There's no gun involved. Subways, tuna fish sandwich, PCP laced marijuana, crossbows, knives, subway cars. And I have one more here. Yes, Grants Pass, Oregon. Isn't this fun? David Oliver Rellin, a co-author of the best-selling book, Three Cups of Tea, said in legal filings about a year before his recent suicide that his career suffered from allegations of lies. In the story of a humanitarian who built schools in Pakistan and Afghanistan, uh, David Oliver Rellin killed himself in the rural community of Corbett near Portland, Corbett, near Portland last month, according to the medical examiner. He died of a blunt force head injury that he inflicted upon himself. Suicide by blunt force. Neither he nor Rellin's family, medical examiner nor the family, would provide details. Body was found along railroad tracks, running along the Columbia River, where a rural road passes over the tracks and I-84. Blunt force suicide. And by the way, one correction, Javon Belcher did spend four hours in the other woman's apartment. I had it wrong. Yeah, apparently Javon Belcher did spend some time. He did go into the woman's apartment. After he was woken up in his Bentley, spent four hours with her, he took her home, he went out to his Bentley, fell asleep, woke up, went in back into her house, and was there till about 5 or 5.30 in the morning, and then went home. So, let's see. Uh, ah, Raleigh, North Carolina. Prison officials in North Carolina calling for criminal investigation after six inmates alleged that correctional officers forced them to rub habanero hot sauce on their genitals, resulting in painful blisters. But they are still alive. They are still alive. So in this story of mayhem and murder and suicide and death, the hot habanero sauce trick on the genitals has left people alive. Uh, not dead. Nandamakang Su might be interested in that during his next NFL game. Detroit Lions defensive tackle.